So what's the title of our sermon today? It's a compound title. And it goes like this. What is in a name? Semicolon. 21 names and titles for the devil. What is a name? A name. Semicolon. 21 names and titles for the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus says if a man is going on a walk, it will be reasonable, pertinent, needful for him to sit down and calculate whether with 10 soldiers he can match 20 soldiers of his opponents. And if not, he will send a message to negotiate terms of peace. In other words, it is needful your enemy. Praise the name of the Lord. If you don't know your enemy, you will be doing yourself a disservice. Praise God. Amen. The safest way to know the devil is through the Bible. Any other way, you will become a prey. The safest way to know the devil is through the Bible. Any other way, you will be called a prey. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, what is in the name? 21 names and titles for the devil. First question from the title is What is in a name? Now, in the spiritual realm, or in the realm of the spirit, or in the babies, or underneath the earth, or even amongst the earth, Amen. Names are not mere nouns. No when we were in primary school or secondary school, they tell us that a name is a noun or what is a noun. They say the noun is the name of a place or a thing or a person. That was our understanding of noun. I believe our English teachers and I think we still remember it as a picture. My sister who is a scholar in here, she's not in our so I know I am in the right track. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know it's only Jesus that cannot be correct. Pastor can be corrected, yes or no? Do you know that? Brother, do you know that? You're looking at me like you don't know that. You know that, don't you? <laughs> Pastor can be corrected. It's only Jesus that cannot be corrected. Amen. Again, it's only the devil cannot be corrected because the devil is incorrigible. Praise the name of the Lord. The devil is so so that the wrong doing that he cannot told otherwise. Am I making some sense? Amen. So what is in the name? In the realm of the spirit, names are not mere nouns. Now, spiritually, names are verbs. Spiritually, names are verbs. So in the realm of the spirit, a name is not a noun. A name is a verb. Praise the name of the Lord. Is a verb descriptive of an entity. Is a verb denotes a man's traits. In the realm of the spirit, a name denotes status. In the name of the realm of the spirit, a name denotes position. In the realm of the spirit, a name denotes power. So this can be expected. Just focus. Just what? Focus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So in the realm of the spirit, names are parts. Names denote reputation. Names can also denote ignorance. Amen. As the case may be. So then, to have appropriate biological insight into the nature the modus of writing and the objective of the devil, we need to have some measure of exposition on the names of the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. To follow me arithmetically, I told you what you went to understand the Bible is to follow the reading arithmetically. If we say that a verb in the realm of the spirit, if we say that a 
the day is the power. Therefore, the things of the devil, being as the devil to tell us the nature, the purpose of morality, and the objective of the devil. Simple statement. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Nevertheless, God has given Jesus a name above every other name, according to Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11, that at the mention, at the mention, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every name shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is God to the glory of the the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So aside from the name of Jesus, Jesus also has about 256 other names in the Bible. 256 other names in the Bible. But that name Jesus is his foremost and most powerful name. Praise the name of the Lord. Why are they why is it the most foremost and the most powerful of all its 256 odd names? Why? Because the name of Jesus is greater than every other name in heaven, on earth, and on the internet, as we are told in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. And secondly, as it is written concerning Jesus, the mother, she was told. She will give birth to her son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from sin. So when you mention the name Jesus, it means salvation from sin, redemption from sin, deliverance from sin, and sicknesses, and all the wise of the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we getting somewhere? Amen. No wonder there that some writer says, You are greater than what people say. Praise the name of the Lord. We are so limited as human beings in our grammar and language and vocabulary that no matter how we praise God, that's why I tell us it's a privilege. No matter how we praise God, we are still on that praise. Greater than what people say. Hallelujah. Amen. Even in the natural realm of the physical realm, a name defeats identity, a name defeats brand, a name defeats status, a name defeats privilege, a name defeats power, a name defeats office, a name defeats position, a name defeats reputation, even in the natural realm. That's why when you say to somebody, I drive the Mercedes. It's only one name that you call. The person knows many things beyond that thing that you have just mentioned. Because that name you know. You get that thing. Or you back in that country, you tell somebody that uh, I am a Mopalaji Bank Anto Company. He knows, he knows what you are saying. Praise the name of the Lord. So names are not just names, most especially in the spirit realm. So that answers the first part of our attack, what is in the name. Now we want to look at the 21 names of the devil. There are many more of the other names, but we just limit ourselves to 21 names. And like I say, if names be a fact, then his names will give him a way to us. So that we can know his nature, we can know his objective. We can know this motives of brandy. So not only can we counter it, we can indeed overcome it as the overcomer that we are in Christ Jesus. So one of his names is Apollyon or Abaddon. We find that in Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. You will need to turn to your Bible to be praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 9, verse and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew language or Hebrew tongue is called Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue had his name called Apollyon. The name, the devil's name called Apollyon denotes the devil's obsession or obsession. 
successive pastor of sorry, the devil's name called Apollyon denotes the devil's disposition to destruction. Apollyon or Apollon means destroyer or destruction. This name denotes the devil as a personification of the idea of destruction. So when you see what is going in Sudan, going in Ukraine, going in everywhere, whether at a personal level, a community level, international level, or global level, you can verily say the devil is behind this. Praise the name of the Lord. Destruction of destiny, destruction of marriages, destruction of focus, destruction of vision, destruction of whatever that is destroyable. The devil is the personification of destruction. And as we see from that verse, it's also the angel of the bottomless pit. Number two name of the devil is accuser of our brethren. Accuser of our brethren. We find that in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, where the scripture says that the accuser of the brethren has been. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is some is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So the name of the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Amen. It is successive as time to bring false charges and accusations against Christians to weaken your faith, to weaken your Christian fact, to weaken your Christian works, to weaken your Christian hope, and to weaken your Christian influence in the world in which you live. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Another name of the devil is adversary. We are number three now. First Peter 5, 8. This name denotes the devil's position and stands as an act enemy of folk, of God, and of Christians. He's an adversary. He's one that opposes. He's one that counters you. He's the one that stands in any good thing that you want to do. Praise the name of the Lord. For me, having had a kind of science background, I say, oh, yeah. And sometimes I like to do experiment to prove something. And sometimes you can do a scandal experiment as scientifically as in lab and do and some of the experience experiment is just by observing the environment. Evil is more easily accomplished than good. Mm. If you watch from the corner of your eye, you see that evil is more easily accomplished than good. Why is it difficult to accomplish? Because you have an opponent. And one of the chief opponents against you is even your flesh. Because your flesh is not born again. Your flesh is not born again. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why it's easy to sleep than to wake up and pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The hard person. First Peter 5, 8. He says the devil is your adversary is coming about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he will devour. Number four, the name of the devil is Bezebel or Baal Bezebel or Baal This name of the devil is only found in the New Testament. We see it in Matthew chapter 3, verse 24 and verse 28. We also find it in Mark chapter 3, verse 22. The name of the devil found only the best, best, uh, in the New Testament is called Bezebel. What does it mean? It means God of the flies or Lord of the flies. Praise the name of the Lord. In the early days when I first learned this, I used to live in Nigeria. I used to associate him with God of house fly. That's the way I call him. God of house fly. So when I saw those big house fly companies, I would just say, I bind you, you Bezebos spirit, get out. The fly will find the way I 
because you have addressed the Lord of the flies. Praise the name of the Lord. That's the name of the devil, Lord of the flies. And that's another thing that someone has said because some of you don't know that the house fly only needs for 40 days. Praise the name of the Lord. And there are spiritual significance of 40 days with respect to the devil. Amen. Lord of the flies. Another thing that pays them for me is Lord of Dawn. Lord, Lord of Dawn. Dawn means animal people. That's what Dawn means. Animal people. So the devil is Lord of animal world. Anything dirty and stinking, he presides over it. So if any aspect of your life is dirty and stinking, you know who to chase him. You know who to chase him. You know what prayer point to pray. Not the prayer point to Lord of bless this woman and set an amen. That one is not like that. Amen. Paul says you will not pray like people walk in the head. You need to know which prayer point to use. Amen. Is God or Lord of the tongue or the tongue of God? Number five, another name of the devil is Belia. Belia, second Corinthians chapter four. Belia means worthlessness. That's what Belia means. Belia means worthlessness. Unsurprisingly, this name is given to the devil because anything that is in eternally estranged from God is indeed worthless. So we as Christians, we derive our substance, we derive our God, we derive our identity from God. Praise the name of the Lord. Even the plants and the birds and the air, they derive their essence and their being and their beauty from God. The devil and the school world are the ones that are eternally constrained from God. Hence the name of the devil, Belial, means what less, less. And this should tell us that we have power in Christ Jesus to face up to him. Praise the name of the Lord. We have power in Christ Jesus to face up to him. Because this Bible means of the devil is what the, the Lord takes of him. It is what the Lord takes of him. Praise the name of the Lord. Because like we are saying, a name is a power. This is what the Lord makes of him. So the devil is not coming and talking to say, Oh, we pray for him. We pray for him. He's a, he's a needed man. He's a bad man. No, he said, this is a failure. This is a failure. What they say. Praise the name of the Lord. If the who didn't know better than who give his head, that's not the very God. Amen. Then in the Old Testament, we see this we have people called sons or men of Belia. It is an expression in the Old Testament and in Judges 19, 22, 20, and in Judges 20, in uh, 13, and in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 16. It is an expression that means somebody is lawless. So in the Old Testament, we see some phrases where they say, these sons of Belial, which means this retracts, this worthless people, this worthless people, this contracts, this no good people. Praise the name of God. Number six, name of the devil is dragon. We find that in, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. Incidentally, in this world, there are two contracts that uh, epitomizes the dragon. They have it in their fly. Things they do tend to be circling around it. Whether it's a proposal or ignorance or a historical matter, I do not know. Or I pretend not to know. Praise the name of the Lord. One of them is Wales. And the other one is China. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Have any of you seen the Wales flag before? Amen. What is dragon? Dragon means a beast of incomprehensible. Monstrosity, that is a monstrous spirit, beast, given to inhabiting both the arid place and inhabiting the heavens and inhabiting the marine places. Praise the name of the Lord. The dragon is a beast of monstrous proportion. Biologically and physically, there used to be dragons and they became extinct because God, when the world fell and uh, the world became perverse, God said, No, these creatures. They need to be removed. Praise the name of 
effort. Hallelujah. Amen. It's like having a gun in your house for those who live in America or in America and then one of your house members now becomes mad. You will know that it's no longer safe to have a gun in the house. Yes or no? You will have to remove the gun. So you can imagine if there were still dragons and the devil actually entered them. Even the whole of the uh, fire brigade in London who condemn it because dragon used to according to story spit fire, yes or no. And if the devil we have to possess like three dragons and send them to to, to hack them. No fire service rock will stop it. So God said no. Okay, uh, this one's the place. Praise the name of the Lord. Because before the, 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 the fall of Adam and Eve, they were created so that when we see them or Adam see them, we will behold the awesomeness of God. And we will also be able to appreciate that in the matter the beat and the terribleness ruling of these animals, that we who are created to possibly are still higher than those animals. So they were put there for a purpose. But when the Adam fell and the war of God come past, and the devil, as we shall see, become the God of this world. You know, this this AK force the seven is not safe in the kitchen. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to remove it. So God is still good all the time. Yes, God is good all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. What is another name of the devil? Number seven. The enemy. The enemy. The enemy. The enemy. So the devil is not a enemy. He's not a enemy or an enemy. The enemy. The, the word enemy prefixed by D is the devil's title of name. This denotes it. When we say the devil is the enemy, it denotes the devil, rightly so, and practically so, because these things are Bible names for him. It denotes the devil as a private enemy and a public enemy. What did I say? A private enemy and a public enemy. What is a private enemy? A private enemy is someone who hates another and seeks their heart for malicious gratification. A private enemy is someone who hates another and seeks their heart for malicious gratification. So the enemy, the devil is a private enemy. He hates you and I, and he seeks our hand for malicious gratification. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the Bible, the Bible says there are some wicked people that they do not go to sleep unless they have done evil. That means the day is getting to evening, it's getting to bedtime, and they have not done evil. They can't go to sleep. For them to be able to have a good sleep, they must have done it. So evil to them is gratification. It gratifies them. It makes them at ease. It makes them relax. It makes them laugh. It makes them enjoy. It makes them say this has been a good day. But that, I don't know whether they use the word good. Amen. <laughs> because it would be good it cannot be. I don't know which word they use. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm not asking those of you who have been which God to confess what word they use. They don't that from their side. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's in your past. Say it's in your past. Amen. Good things are on the way. All things are because. Amen. So then, what is a public enemy? A public enemy is one who belongs to a kingdom or a country or to a realm or to a group or to a party that is at war with another. That is a public enemy. A public enemy is somebody that belongs to a country or to a kingdom or to a realm or to a group that is at war with another group. Now we know that the kingdom of darkness is at war with the kingdom of light, yes or no? So on that plane, the devil is a public enemy. So he belongs to a contrary kingdom, is the chief and the king of that kingdom of darkness, and we are not belongs to the kingdom of God, so he is our public enemy because he belongs to a kingdom that is opposite to us and he is in, that is at war with us. So he is the enemy because he is both a private enemy and a public enemy. 
So the devil hates you for whom you are as a woman who created in the image of God. He hates you for what kingdom you belong to. So head or tail, he hates you. Praise the name of the Lord. So you think that if I leave the devil alone, he will leave me alone. That is a faulty thinking. Praise the name of the Lord. If you go to Kenya or to Safari, you can ask Antidote and say, Antidote, if you leave Lion alone, does Lion leave you alone? Antidote will be able to pass you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Antidote will be able to go and pass you. Because even the man who said to us, go to the ants, go and ask the ants. So you can go and ask Antidote. So if you leave the devil alone, he is not going to leave you alone. He is the deep enemy. Another name for the devil is the God of this world. Now we are coming from here. Follow now. Follow. Follow. That's why the Bible says, We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Which means we are not answerable to him, even though he is the God of this world. We are not answerable to him. Praise the name of the Lord. We are not answerable to him. We are not carrying his passport. We carry a heavenly passport. Praise the name of the Lord. We are ambassadors of Christ. First, we find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. The name is a deification of the devil. To say that the devil is God of this world, which the Bible says, so it's not anybody that says it. The Bible itself says it. The Bible means the word of God says the devil is the God of this world. It means the devil is deified as a false god, as a hidden deity. As an idol of the highest order. The title of the devil as the God of this world is the devil's self promotion above all creation. Is the devil's self promotion above all creation. It is also indicative of the devil's eternal failure to usurp God and become God. It also, unfortunately, so depicts that the devil was successful to usurp Adam's original position. So the devil did, did a good in the heavens to usurp God. He failed. He was cast down. Then he did a trick, a trick on Adam and Eve, succeeded. So he took Adam and Eve's place when he failed to take God's place. And God created Adam and Eve that they will be on earth as God is in heaven. So Adam and Eve were to be God under the earth, submitting to the Father. So the devil usurped them, displaced them, did a good on them. So he became the God of this world. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Number nine, the thief. They were not a thief. The what? And there's a whole sermon on this. As I was driving to church, I was thinking that uh, that sermon on this one maybe will be for when there's a worker's suit. Amen. Because that is a sermon that's first to thrown at workers. The thief. Then you will see how the devil is able to get all the things that he gives to his followers. All this money that he gives them, all these things he gives. They are stolen. Things meant for you and mine. The witch out of our spiritual listeners, ignorance, and all that, and therefore hijacks it, puts it in his uh, warehouse. And then when he has followers, he gives them. That's how he blesses them. He blesses them with stolen goods. Stolen goods. That's why it's called the team. Amen. We find that in John 10 10. The devil's name, the team, showcases him as one who phenomenously takes it. And rise and statues and heritage of another for four by false doctrine, by seduction, by violence, violence, or by fraudulent cheating. He is the chieftain of every thing of thieves. Praise the name of the Lord. Number 10, Father of Lies, John 8 44. These are titles of the devil, Father of Lies. Father of Lies is a devil's title ascribing him as the sole patent right owner of lies. Lies is an intellectual product. Lies is an IP. It's, an, it's a software if you like. 
Lie is an intellectual product. You know there are people who are expert at lying. In fact, if you could bottle their lies, you make more money than Coca-Cola. Praise the name of the Lord. So lying is an, is an intellectual product. It's something produced with the brain or with the senses. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And the devil is the one who has the patent and the copyright on lying. Hence, he's called the father of lies. Father of lies. How can we define a lie? A lie, a lie can be defined as an intentional violation of the truth. An intentional violation of the truth. My own description or definition is that lie is violence against truth. When you lie, you are executing violence against truth. And the thing about truth, Jesus says, nothing can be done against the truth, but for the truth, which means every lie is a lie. Every lie will not take you to where it has promised you to take you. That's why when you lie, you will need another lie to support that lie. Then you will need another lie to support that lie. Because you will not remember what you did. And then somewhere along the line, the thing will give up on you because you don't remember the other one you have said. And the person you have been lying to, you told me the other day that. Uh, uh -huh. But if it's truth, when you say it, you don't need to remember it. Because anytime you say it, you will still touch with the other one because it's the same. So lie is violence against truth. So when you are tempted to lie or find yourself lying, you will not realize that. That's why we are looking at this thing. That not only, and I will state it in my notes, not only blah blah blah, you are executing violence against the truth. Lie is intentional violation of truth. The key word there is intentional. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hence the Bible says, all liars shall have their part in the day which burned with fire and Christ, which is the second death. Revelation 21, verse 8. Amen. So you see, when people lie, there will be the father of lies. When people lie, they are either infringing on the copyright of the devil, regarding his IP, intellectual property. Either they are infringing his copyright, or they have knowingly or unknowingly entered into what is called retail contract. When you enter a retail contract, like you have a shop, you enter a retail contract with Coca-Cola. They produce Coca-Cola, you sell it in your shop. You promote it in your shop. Like you have Tesco and all other shops. Most of the things you see there, they are not made by Tesco. They have a contract. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Or you walk in the other side of, uh, I think the other fashion side of Tesco is called George or something like that. Praise the name of the Lord. Eh? I was coming because that's where I was going. So my sister would produce that uh, nice, nice thing. And then they will send it their praise that they want to So when you are lying, it means you have a day contract with the devil. He generates it, you dispense it, you distribute it. Praise that they want to So we shall not be distributors of the devil's wares in the mighty name of Jesus. The devil to have to be stopping at them, will take ten of them. Next occasion it is. We cover here, we say that the, the devil's name is dragon. It will not. Yes, yes. number six. So it's now, not turn it back again. Amen. And that was right in Revelation chapter 20, verse 2. Another name of the devil is Great Red Dragon. So he has a name that is Dragon. Now he has another name that is called Great Red Dragon. And we find that in Revelation chapter 12, verses 3 and 4. Why do we have the prefix or the appendage? Great, red. That's what we are doing now. This denotes the heightened monstrosity of the devil. So he is not only a dragon, he is also a great red dragon. Praise the name of God. It denotes the heightened monstrosity of the Devil, that is one great as in his 
ferocity in subverting the earthly manifestation of the kingdom of God. He is called great as in his ferocity, his die-hard resolve to subvert the manifestation of the kingdom of God on earth. If you read in context that uh, Revelation chapter 12, which is where we read, I believe that was a Bible reading portion, you will see all his words was to truncate, to subvert the manifestation of the kingdom of God on earth. That's why great was added to him in that portion of the Bible. Then what, why did they put great red? Why didn't they just say great dragon? Red was added to show his fury, his rage, and his being drunk with the blood of people. Bread is added to show his fury. You know when sometimes people are so angry, you say this person is, is red, especially I know you people with uh, with some kind of uh, color, you don't show red. Amen. When you are angry, do you show red? And then the other people they can be red. When they are really angry in the office, amen. They will be red. Amen. Which means blood has flowed to the face. It actually is a blood a body mechanism. It means the blood has flowed. And that is what causes that red. So the devil is red with rage, red with fury, and is also red from being drunk with the blood of saints, of martyrs, and of course of ordinary human beings. That's why the Bible is written in Revelation 12, verse 3 and 4 as the great red dragon. So to summarize on this first part of our, of our two part series, what is this telling us about the devil? And we suggest the devil is not to be played with. Amen. The devil is not at all. You see, I have had stories where some people say, I will do it and I will repent. And praise the devil of God. To say, I will do something, I will repent, is like saying, I will visit the devil, have a good chat with him, have a good nice time with him. Then when I'm done, I will come out and return to where I came. Amen. Because anything you want to do that we you need to repent afterwards is a visitation to the devil. Now, when you say I, 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 that's the language of the devil. Who tells you that when you visit the devil, you will come out when you want? Who told you that? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Who told you that one? He's a precious person. He's a dragon. He's a private enemy. He's a public enemy. He's someone who is angry at you, raging at you. So it's not somebody to be played with. Another thing we learn from the names that we have so far looked at is that the devil is not somebody to be afraid of. Amen. Amen. Why? Because he's Lord of lies and Lord of God. How can you be afraid of somebody who is a king of animal? Praise the name of the Lord. And you, a king and priest in Christ Jesus. Does that make any sense? Amen. Amen. So the Bible does not ask us to be afraid of the devil. But the Bible asks us not to meddle with him, not to play with him. Not to hang that with him because he's dangerous. And that is understanding it. Praise the name of the Lord. But he never asks us, no scripture asks us to be afraid of him. There's no scripture that asks. In fact, the Bible says, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love. How? And a sound mind. So if you find yourself getting afraid of the devil, you need revelation. You need deliverance, you need grace, you need exhortation from the word of God, you need faith, you need to read your Bible better. You also need fellowship with brethren because they say, I am sharpened, I am praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So though you are not afraid of the devil, it does not mean when you go to your village, you will not go under that thing where the devil is living and you want to lose your head and Praise the name of the Lord. It's not something like that. That's not the fear they say you don't have. Praise the name of the Lord. Except God sent you, don't go. 
Amen. You have to be especially said. Even if you are in the Bible, God told him, You see that devil is the giant. Giant is not like you. The Bible said, Gideon was afraid. He did it at night. He did it at what? At night. And he did it with a few people that followed him. He didn't go alone. He had back. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I hope we have learned something. It might be a dry topic and it's meant to be because the devil is a dry issue. He lives in arid places which is like desert. So it's a dry issue. There is nothing there exciting except for his followers to talk about it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I am wonderfully made. I am fearfully made. I am to God. Amen. Owners of 